I really wanted to track you down when you were doing obviously all the stuff for Stanley Cup. And then I was like, okay, her world's got to be like insane. No, you could have totally asked me. I did like so yeah. many shows, like basically drunk slash hungover. So, <laughs> which is the best way, right? What's it? Uh, you have to be able to do it that way if you're going to, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, we're equal opportunity employer, don't have to drink. But it uh, it really shows you what you're made of. One hundred percent. Yes. Mm-hmm. Show me. Yes. Let's <laughs> see what everyone's made of. When I think of how many shows that I have done hungover and just feeling <laughs> terrible, and I'm so obviously like on the other side of that now that I'm like, how did I function like that? Like when you're just in that rhythm and you do, you kind of like wear that on your sleeve. You're like, I got this. It's fine. How sharp can I keep my brain? Let's go. It really is such a test. Like one of like a director from a network. When I, I told him, I'm like, oh man, it's, I forgot being on the road how how difficult it was like to keep up with everyone. Like everyone is insane. Like I don't know how media do it. Like they're out every night and then they're like up the next day at like 6 a.m. breaking news. And I'm just like, I'm just not in that shape anymore. The pandemic really slowed me down. And, and it's then people- also rough because you're like, wait, let me slap on a lash. Let me oh, put on God. a lip. Like, let's I, like give me a distractor. I don't want to go on to something like, first of all, I don't want to go on barefaced anyways. But like, oh, my God, give me just give me a minute. And I'm like trying to put my fake eyelash on like my hand <laughs> is shaking. I'm like, oh, my God, Julie, pull it together. at 35. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so bad. I feel like you and I have like yeah. a similar makeup happening right now. Or do you have a pink pop of a lip? Or my eyes? Yeah, a bit of a me? bit of a bit of a yeah. Kylie pink, pinky red that I got while oh. I was passing the Kylie cosmetics in the airport every time I would go. How tempting to is that, right? I they know. Do a good job. Do what is job. the dumbest thing you've ever bought at the airport? Dude, I bought so much dumb shit in my life. <laughs> My whole, speaking of swearing as we were before, my whole, (laughs) my whole being in essence is dumb shit. And so I just have like a tickle trunk slash like storage locker of like, I love that nobody knows what a tickle trunk is, except for me and you. I know what a tickle (laughs) trunk is. That's some Canada shit right there. Mr. Dress up. What up? Mr. Dress up up and I, we would get along great. Um, I mean, yeah. He used to live behind like one of my house. Like we moved a lot, but he is from Pickering. And oh, no uh, yeah, he used to live like near us. And we like ran into him at the grocery store one time. It was a big like deal. celeb, like <laughs> Mr. Mr. Dress, dress up. up. What? Actually, it's great. I feel like I should just be like Miss Dress Up now. And just like, that's basically what I do. It's just being like wearing ridiculous stuff. So yeah, <laughs> stupid stuff at the airport. I think it's like when you just like have already bought it. Like, I, it's like, I'm buying another neck pillow that I've like thrown out before or something like that, you know, but I will say when I got the job, okay. So when I had my audition at FS1 back in 2013, I had a layover back to Regina in the Minnesota airport. And I was like, I got drunk. Um, sorry. This is like, I'm not always drunk. Um, but I drank at the airport. It was like, well, the what else are you supposed to do at an airport to be completely honest for like four hours after I just had like one of the coolest experiences yes, of you need my to life relish in that moment. Yeah. 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 And thinking in my head, like whether I, I remember leaving that audition being like, if this happens, it, it probably won't happen, but this was like really cool anyway. And then I told myself, if I get the job, I'm going to buy these Tiffany sunglasses. Don't so, like whatever. <laughs> hey girl. Hey, I bought those Tiffany sunglasses because <laughs> I got the job. But I also bought earrings at this like really nice place that like I just felt bad because I'd been in there for so long because I was just trying to waste time. So those that and they still exist because it was like I can't let those go because like had and to there's nothing like having like a cocktail or two and going oh you know what yeah. I should get five hundred dollars <laughs> sunglasses. You know yes. who can afford that? This girl right I know, here. I know. Charge it to my card and then you my land God. and you're like what have I done? No I know yeah so, no they still exist. Oh, I love that. That's so great. Um, okay. Let's run things all the way back because I remember <laughs> you coming. I talked about this when I got to do your show many moons ago, yes. um, but when you came in, we both worked at the score, you were interning at the score when I was there. 
Um, I believe I saw what was one of your very first on cam moments. Oh, nothing to be ashamed of. It was, a um, I like, look like, I'm like a 60 year old woman in like my H and M like full <laughs> suit that I have, or like my Susie Shear like Susie full Shear. suit where I was like, I am a reporter at the score. So serious. <laughs> so I was but I serious. feel like you did a really great job. Like I, I remember it being good. I don't remember it being like, oh my God, what's this girl doing? Like, I think it, like, I feel like you did a really great job. Um, when you came in and you were interning at the score, like you were just so eager to learn. You wanted to be that sponge. You wanted to kind of be around everybody and see how everything worked. Um, then I left and moved away. I did all these things. What was your next step after the score? uh well first of all my internship was I feel like like just basically make a wish for me to like be there because <laughs> I was doing um my master's in England at the time and so mm. we got three international internships and I was like cool I want to do one when I come home to Canada for Christmas and I was able to in the month of January but it was not like I was part of Ryerson or like Seneca or Western or anyone that had like which I didn't get into any of those schools either by the way it was just like a program with the score it was just like mm-hmm. Julie's coming from England and she wants to like intern here and so I just kind of like whatever went around and hung out with people and would go on watch shoots that's where I met Adnan too and like mm. obviously Cabby and like seeing all these people and it was just cool to kind of like be in and around it. And then I went back to England, finished school there. And then, yeah, decided to come back to Canada because I interned at CBC's London Bureau, which was so cool. Like to be, you know, you get like doing the British parliamentary election and like all this kind Whoa. of stuff where, where uh, Peter Mansbridge was there. He like flew in and, and did it. I remember being like, oh my God, Peter Mansbridge. Also <laughs> super Canadian reference here. <laughs> I love it. I love talking Canadian things. It, it really makes me happy and it makes me miss home so much. It's like, yeah, it's kind of funny. You forget that like uh, I have Peter Mansbridge's book and like I talked with him earlier this year, just some career advice. And I was like, man, Spike, that's my boyfriend. I'm like, holy cow. I just like- Your boyfriend's name's with- Spike? Yeah. That's his like wow. nickname, but like that's, that's what he goes great. By. That's like some John Hughes shit right there. I know it is. I love it's, that. It's, it's pretty intense. <laughs> he's the opposite of what that would sound like. It's not. <laughs> okay. He's more of like. So like he doesn't a, ride a motorcycle camp, and wear a leather jacket. Boy. Yeah, no okay. way. He's he's an indoor cat, is what I call him. Mm. Um. Anyway, <laughs> we, but we don't like cats. Anyway. Um. <laughs> and and so Peter Mansbridge was like, I remember just being like getting all of the confidence I had ever had in my life. And there, it was like, there was a big party for someone's going away party that night. And I went up to Peter Mansbridge and I was like, hi, I'm Julie Sorpinks. Like I'm interning here, big fan. Would love to be able to help you out while you're here, whatever. And he was like, okay, cool. Well, I will need someone to like help me during the election, like whatever, printing stuff or like as a runner or anything. And it's like, I'm on, on it. it. And then my intern boss was like, that's Julie, you can't just like go up to Peter Mansbridge and like ask him that, like that's puts him in a pretty odd position. And I was like, what? Like, there's no other interns here. Even it was just like me. (laughs) There's like 10 people in the entire bureau, like at all. So like, no, you're not like, you can't do that. That's just like, not, not cool. Faux pas, party foul. I was like, um, aren't we supposed to be like, learn these skills of like how to network and like do this kind of stuff, whatever. So Peter was super sweet. He's like, well, listen, when you come back, whenever you come back to Canada, like, what do you want to do or anything? I was like, I want to work at hockey night in Canada. And so he introduced me to a woman who still works there, runs hockey night, Kathy Broderick. And I interviewed for like a shot listing position, which is kind of like logging games. And I got it and I was super pumped. It was like, oh my God, amazing. Um, and then, but you know, when you're younger in the industry, like I met at the time, the head of hockey night in Canada, who ironically ended up hiring me for the Olympics last year. Cause he works with the Olympics now. And he's like, I remember so well, you coming into my office being like, I'm here at hockey night in Canada. Like put me on TV. Like I finished my oh, master's. No. I did shit like that all the time. I'm obviously ready. Let's go. And people are like, calm down. Just pump. Yeah, the like I have blocks. a demo reel from a university, uh, <laughs> interviewed the squash team. Um, I have, I once, you know, whatever, all this stuff. 
And then he was just like, you know, you should really go work in a town outside of Toronto to get some experience. And I was like, okay. So then I just like sent out 40 packages across the country to like every CBC, global, whatever, from literally Whitehorse to Prince Edward wow. Island. God, imagine and- Whitehorse was the one you went to. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, who's going to respond to this? Like, uh, that would be an adventure, though, honestly. Like, what a trip. Totally. And after I wrote all of the packages of like my like DVD personalized cover letter, like, oh, yeah, picture, all this stuff, I realized I'd put the return address on like the wrong side because <laughs> I'm an idiot because I'm like 23 <laughs> years old. I remember my friend being like, oh, that's going to look super awkward for them to like get, realizing you don't even know how to like mail something. <laughs> Anyway, after sending all of those out, the only message I got back from 40 networks was one from Medicine Hat that was like, thanks for the package. We're good. And I was like, that's it? Like, Deflating. that's all I got? Yeah. And then, then I went, whatever. I ended up actually getting a job at this place called Fox Soccer Report, who uh, Nabil Kareem worked at. Mm-hmm. And it was in Winnipeg and they were like, I just knew soccer because I lived in England and like, I could just know <laughs> soccer even a little bit more than someone else. It was like, right. okay. At that time, you know, obviously it's grown a lot, but it was like, okay, you know what this is. You can talk the talk at least even a little bit. We'll hire you. And then I was just kind of like, I was in Winnipeg and it was supposed to be an on-air job, but it was very much behind the scenes. Like Ugh. I wrote people's scripts and I edited everything and I learned so much you had to write about- other people's scripts when you thought that you had the on-camera gig yeah but also like I should not have been writing their scripts like <laughs> they knew soccer better than I did like I remember one guy and I'll never forget it for the rest of my life he was so great he just he pulled me aside and he was like hey like what questions do you have about soccer and like writing soccer highlights I was like okay so I was like, don't tell anybody, but like, what would it be like, say in hockey, like, you know, you're doing this, what's that in soccer? And he'd be like, okay, it's like this. I'm like, okay, so in hockey, if you did this, what would that be called in soccer? And he just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like free translation.com. But hockey and to then, soccer. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Like, that's just like that. How would I write it? Like, how do you guys want me to write it? Blah, blah, blah. So I just, I, I mean, I'm glad I learned like so much with just like how to write it, how to do all that. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, going all the way there, not not getting like a sniff on air was pretty bummed out. And I just made great friends in Winnipeg and they were like, there's some of my best friends. It's not show friends. It's show biz out of my light. Beat it. So I know You've then done I ended up, so much though. Yeah, like it's yeah, so I crazy. Have. Like, I mean, I, I always love hearing people's stories of like how they get started and that, I mean, that does feel very similar to like how I was with things. Like you send out the packages to everybody and you put all this stuff together. You're knocking on every door, like talking to Peter Mansbridge. How do I do? So I remember I did something very similar as at a Bowmanville Eagles hockey game. Mm-hmm. And Bob McKenzie was there because his son played for the team before he went to go play. Uh, uh, oh gosh. Who did he go play for? Anyways, um, he was playing for the Bowmanville Eagles at the time. And yeah, yeah, he was there. And I was like, um, how do I get on TV? And he's like, uh, first of all, <laughs> no, he was actually so sweet. He was so sweet and so oh, yeah, kind. Bob's the best. He was great. I mean, I, I actually don't even like remember necessarily like, what that information was. I think he was just, you know, he was being nice because we were in public and I shouldn't have asked him. It was that moment where I kind of put him in a weird spot, but I didn't know any better. And you're, you're no, trying to I like think it's find like, a way to that get moment. Your foot in. Yeah, you do. What, what are you, you going to do? do? You're going to give them one of your, your, your cards that you've made like online yeah. somewhere and be like, or like ask for theirs and then like email yeah, back and forth no. or something like that. Which no, I, I mean, I like, happens, the like but... going out and, and kind of being a little bit bullish with like those situations. And also before we go any further, I remember you remember me doing my, and I'll like send you a picture if you put them up, but like, oh my God, nice what too. the weird demo that I like asked them to help me make at the score when I was interning, just to like, I was like, Peyton Manning threw 36 touchdowns. Like my voice was so high. Like I couldn't really like talk any lower. I was really nervous, I think. And you though, and I told you this before, it was like, I first started learning about you when you were at like Bite TV and Spike. Oh, right, and Bite. right. And like you left and it was like the job was open. And I remember like submitting something on Craigslist 
That's and, how we did it back in the day. Yeah, yeah. On shady little websites, you were like, "Oh, you need someone on camera? Here I come. Where are we right. meeting in this back alley for know, the audition? No problem. Yeah. Oh, I have to wear a bikini. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's maybe rethink it. But <laughs> so true. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is for like Renee Paquette's show that she's on. Oh my god!" And then I got to this like casting thing which I think is so funny because I was listening to your pod with Jackie and she mentioned like casting thing like this doesn't happen a lot this just somehow happens for me early on like the first time and I see like 500 other women being like audition I was like shit and I just also remember that was the first time I ever had like talked about Randy Couture where I was like and then I worked with him this year I was like oh man I had an audition a long time ago uh and you, you were there but Obviously I didn't get it, but I was always like, oh, Renee. And then I watched your career, but I'd seen you from like all of the crazy stuff you did where you're like skydiving and throwing yourself off. Of, like, I got a paid mountain $50 like- for that, by the way. No. Like, I'm not even kidding you. I got paid $50. Uh, and that's like, so like, I don't know if things are even like that anymore when people are like breaking into the business in that way. But I was so happy to kind of like have my own show. I was producing it as well, which like, I didn't even know what that meant at the time that I was like, I guess I'm just going to like go book to do this. What's other crazy shit I can do. But when I was going up to do that and they're like, yeah, I was like, I'm going to go skydiving. And I was on my way up there and uh, Jason Agnew, who was uh, the executive producer at, at bite at the time, he is calling me on my way up. He's like, I don't think this is a good idea. I think that somebody might have crashed and did not survive it at some point. And I was like, I've already committed. I don't know. I'm like on my way way up. I'm doing this. Like, yes, maybe it was 150. Maybe it was more than 50, but it was no more. It was definitely not more than 150. Um, Dude, you did like everything. The best part was that the camera didn't work. So they're like, again, I was like, hey, now we're now we're pushing our luck. Yeah. Now we're entering like really dicey territory if this goes wrong. It's I kind of love, like I always loved those like kind of like bullshit salad days of like doing shows like that when you're just like, you're winging it, you're figuring out who you are. You're, you're Mm -hmm. trying to like figure out what those next steps are. You've got these like big stars in your eyes about like, what's the next thing I'm going to go do. And oh my God, it's, it's always such like a fun cool time kind of getting through all that. So you're going through all these things, you're auditioning, uh, when did the gig with Fox come up? So you said 2013, that was your first yeah. big gig in the, in the U S yeah. Yeah. I was working in Regina for two years, um, as like a reporter anchor. And like, I still have such vivid memories there of like driving to Weyburn, Saskatchewan at like 9am on a Sunday, because I had to shoot like junior curling somewhere oh, yeah. where then like I would have to get those highlights then for like the six o'clock news that then I would do and then we'd do the 11 30 as well and it was just like wow this job is pretty pretty uh you know <laughs> I mean I wasn't getting paid, I paid a whole I was gonna be like 37,000 Canadian or something like that where I was like okay this is like not even like livable salary but like the amount of experience I got like I still look back to it pine back to it sometimes because of like the hockey connections I made and see I put up something with like I did a documentary on a hockey player Ryan Murray he plays currently Colorado Avalanche he was injured for a lot of the season but like I was on the ice at the end of the Stanley Cup and like I just saw his family and everyone I was like oh my god like I did a documentary on you and your family like 10 years ago to the day it was just like one of those cool things where you can like track back to kind of having that experience and knowing a lot of these guys and like even like yeah the scout from Tampa it was the head scout of Tampa on stage like while I was announcing his pick I'm like man I remember like like asking you tons of scouting questions back like 12 years ago or something yeah. like that and so those are some cool connections to have but when I was in Regina it was like so I did the documentary on Ryan Murray he was with Octagon, the agency, mm-hmm. and his agent, Rick Follette, was the man. He, like, let me have all access to, like, go behind, this, go behind the scenes with him, go to every whatever, anything you want. We were actually sitting in the stands with Ryan's family with, like, a camera. Like, we're not allowed to do that. We just were, yeah. like, there. Like, and we would walk into draft rooms and, like, follow him in with our camera. Like, that's not allowed. <laughs> anyway, whatever we did it. And, Definitely not. Here's my credential. 
I know. And I edited it and it felt really great. That was like one of the, actually still to this day, one of the highlights of my life and TSN called and they're like, Hey, we want to air it. And I was Whoa, like, Oh my God, yes, this huge. is so cool. But we shot it in standard definition because we were in oh, Regina, Saskatchewan. Yes. And I was so mad. I was like livid at my boss. I was like, why are we not in HD yet? Like, Oh my God. I would have like been in tears. Documentary. Oh, I was, I was yeah. like, I was pretty, he was like, well, like, you know, that, you know, just nice to have the attention. I'm like, no, doesn't mean shit. Anyway. Yeah. Let's have the follow through. Let's yeah. like, yes. Attention. Cool. But like, let's get the follow through. Not like, Hey, I almost got to do this thing. That's really annoying. Like, we're that feels like that would have been like one of those like make or break moments where you're like, Oh my God, I put all this hard work in. I was going to be on TSN. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oof. Yeah. So that was pretty shitty. Obviously I have forgotten about that. Um, but, uh, they, Octagon and Rick introduced me to their manager, uh, one of their entertainment guys, like this guy, John Ferreter. And so uh, I didn't know how any of this stuff worked, right? They're like, come Who on does? down to LA. I still don't. Yeah, I didn't know. I was like, are you guys like flying me down here? They're like, no, honey, like you're going to get your own flight, to come down and stay in like a hotel. And I was like, okay. And so I went. <laughs> um, and then they took me to like all these meetings everywhere. FS1, like, local places access Hollywood all these and I was like I don't know what to say like I like Alice Cooper I shouldn't be at Al Al access Hollywood like I don't <laughs> god I I'm remember not... auditioning at Alex at access Hollywood one time too and I was like mm, I think this is a pass <laughs> I think this no is thanks, not the right thing yeah, yeah yeah um and then honestly when I went to FS1 it was like it felt so right like I walked in there everyone was so nice obviously it's on a like Fox lot and then they were asking me tons of questions about Jay and Dan, who of course, you know, from TSN. And I was like, oh yeah. my God, you guys know Jay and heroes, Dan? Like, I'm obsessed absolute with heroes. them. Yeah, I was like, I'm obsessed with those guys. They're like, yeah. They're like, what else about them do you like? I was like, oh, everything. I was just like then talking Jay and Dan forever, not thinking like, oh, they're going to hire them. And so yeah. I left that. And then they're like, send us some more of your work, blah, blah, blah. I did. And then they flew me down for an audition. And I'll never forget like, this was one this woman. with like Jacob Ullman? Was he part of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Ullman was there. Uh, he's probably the only one still there. Oh yeah. I didn't even know any of these guys. Like I'm in a room with like Eric Shanks, who's yeah. the head honcho and a couple other guys that were there. And I like, I had zero idea what I was in a murderer's row room of people. And I'm like, I like curling. Like, <laughs> you know, whatever. It probably was like, whatever refreshing that I was just like, I don't know how yeah. I got here or whatever. Yeah. I'm definitely not going to get this job. Um, and then, so came back down for the audition and I'll never forget me and this other woman who were, who were staying at the hotel. My audition was at 6 a.m. What? what? Yeah. 6 a.m. I was like, okay, definitely not sleeping tonight. To go through hair and makeup or like you were on camera? No, I already did my own hair and makeup and then like to get picked up at the hotel. And I was like with <gasps> her and she, we were both wearing like the same outfit, but like, she had brown hair and blonde hair. I was wearing a blue dress. She had red dress. We had like nude heels on and like a black blazer. And I was like, okay, so we're all 100% like the same type of person. And she's <laughs> like, so where, where are you coming from? I'm like, um, Canada. She's like, where? I was like, Saskatchewan. It's like above North Dakota. And she's <laughs> like, oh, where? Like, I know Hazel May. I worked with her. Like where? I was like, Regina. And it was just like, like she knew how small a town I was coming from then. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, okay. She's like, yeah, I'm at Nesson, like something, you know, big in Boston. I was like, cool, yeah. cool. Yeah, I got no chance. And then I, we went through everything and uh, I'll never forget being in like the makeup area where they just like did touch-ups and they're like, do you want fake eyelashes? I was like, oh no, I don't want something to interfere with me reading the teleprompter. Like, <laughs> ah, like what now? I'd be oh like, my oh my God. On. Yeah. <laughs> I and was so I, the same for the I longest time. I didn't know about fake eyelashes. I had not a clue. I had no idea yeah. that that was like a thing. I didn't know how hair extensions work. Like not oh, I know. a clue. Thank God yeah. somebody smartened me up. I know the eyelashes thing. I was like, well, I can't have something like, in, like, what if it gets in my eye and I'm trying to read and I'm like, oh no. It's a job to do. Don't you understand? Yeah, I, have, I have a job to do. <laughs> and then I asked the makeup woman, I was like, Oh, you know, making conversation like, do you have a busy day? You know, you got any more people? And she just like points to a list on the wall that had like 500,000 people's names. And I was like, 
oh okay great um I'll just take a little anti shine and be off my way yeah (laughs) (laughs) and I saw some really big names on there too I was like okay they obviously made a mistake which I'm still pretty sure they did anyway whatever did the audition and then just didn't think about it afterward and then about a month later like my agent was like yeah they want to hire you I was like a jokes but yeah I think (laughs) that also probably came for like a different amount of money than any of those other women who had been working in the States would have ever even entertained where I was like, right. You know, I would have right. paid to go there. Hey, that's, that's, that's how it goes, right? There's always somebody younger than you. That'll take the job for less money. I that's, hate that. Oh, I, I hate, hate that, that shit too. I, like, I f- hate it. I, was like, I remember the first I was, time I heard yeah. that I had never heard that phrase before. And I was like, wait, excuse me. No, it's I know. horrible. I know. I was like, no, I'm just living in like poverty in like, but <laughs> nowhere. Like that's, that's <laughs> different. Where I was like, I from like, Regina, please. I people, was, are, and I, 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 people were great there. It was, you know, very friendly, awesome town. But like I had applied for jobs in Barrie and Winnipeg back again, like to mm-hmm. CTVs and Edmonton. Nope. Not Nada. even a call back. And I was like, am I destined to be here forever? Like, not even after two years. Dude, you have hustled. Like your hustle game is top tier. It's uh, exhausting right now. I was going to say, are you so tired? Yeah. Like it's you- just like, it never ends. It's always yeah. right. Like in hacks, have you seen that? With oh, Jean I'm Smart? Obsessed. She's, obsessed. she's like, it doesn't get easier. It just gets harder. Like there's all, oh, you're always going to have to hustle. Yeah. No matter yeah. what. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, I know you obviously have like representation and whatnot, but like, I feel like you go to bat for yourself all the time. Like you're booking meetings, you're taking things like like you really, it seems to me and tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like you very much. So have your career in your own hands. Um, does it feel that way for like what I, what I, um, the things that like, I know I'm like, very interested in doing I'll be like okay I know I gotta get this as this or like to these people or do this or that or that and then I've always told people because you know people that ask about agents and whatnot they're like oh I need an agent to do this is this I'm like agents are amazing they'll get your name in the room if you are uh, higher high on their list or like you know figure that out your relationship with them yeah but I'm like I will not leave it up to them to do it all because they have a lot of clients and other things they're going to do yeah so if I can be like hey I've got a lead on something or I know something now can you follow up or like I think of them as like a glorified attorney in a way and my my current guy is awesome and I just I mean actually the one that got me to the states he sadly passed away about three years ago oh right before post about that yeah, yeah right before uh he did my deal with Fubo and he died that week And it was like, so just really random. And I was like, oh my God. I remember before he died, he was like, you have to put everything into this. He said for the first six months, it's been three years of putting everything into it. But I was like, um, he's like, or it won't work. And he was also the one that told me to like, take it because he started Arsenio Hall show and worked with Seacrest and Chelsea Handler and stuff. He's like, it's very difficult. Not often that you get offered your own show. And he's like, you are. And I had had another job to do something like the same, like do it, like kind of like an anchor type of thing. And he's like, do this, like do something different. And then he died. And so it was like kind of crazy. So I always think about him with like all this stuff, these awards. Yeah. Yeah. I I know. Right. And I there's awards out there, girl. John. Yeah. But but yeah, anyways, yeah. Long story short with, uh, I, I always tell like younger kids, like, Get, get someone that believes in you and the day. It doesn't matter about the letters. It doesn't matter. I always think about also who else they represent or who their connections are. But like, I just want someone who's like, Julie Stewart Banks. Yeah. Like, I can't wait to go into this yeah. room and be like, I have JSB. Yeah. Not like, well, we also got this Julie or whatever, you know, like, yeah, well, yeah, not, yeah. Or, or even doing that. Like, sometimes they don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't come up at all. Like you're oh under my the, gosh. You know, you're, I know you're it's basement. really stressful because I feel like a lot of times like I know for me when I was first starting I put a lot of weight into like I need to be at this agency I need to mm-hmm. be with this person I need to do this thing because I felt like that just really meant so much and it does it definitely carries some weight but you think like okay I've got that one thing now everything else must just come together right yeah. 
now I get to go be Arsenio Hall or Chelsea. I know Hall you're like, yeah. Like, When's that phone call coming? What's happening with that? What's going on? Um, but no, I mean, for you to be able to to have your own show, to do drinks with Binks, which I got to be on, by the way, that was so. Yes, like, you were one of our first. Well, you were first call it a night guest that we had. We had or call it a night. This. Yes. No, but you were on Drinks with Binks in the pandemic. You I was like on that as well. Guest. But when I got to come in with you in the studio, that was a lot yeah, of fun. And that was yeah. like you were our like first guest on the show. Cause we hadn't, we were like launching that day. I remember. Yeah. But we yeah, saved your right. thing for, yeah, that was, that was cool. I miss doing stuff in person. I know I'm me so too. been here for three years or whatever. So it how now. was it for you being able to cover the Stanley cup? This was so cool. You and Jackie Redman, you guys got to go and hit the road together. Like you've got to do so many amazing things during your career, but we'll, we'll get into to doing uh, the Stanley cup playoffs because you are fresh on the heels of that. What was that whole experience like for you? Honestly, it was awesome. It was like, it, it was so wild and crazy and like jam packed, but for the show that we got to do together, which was such a product of literally being like at a bar and kind of like pitching the idea to someone mm-hmm. just because we're like, Hey, and there's where deals get done, people, right? Why don't we do this or whatever? Yeah. And then it, it was funny. Cause like we, Jackie was obviously there for NHL network. So too. So I wasn't, so I would do like when we were trying to figure out like punishments for picking the wrong teams, like, you know, I made the shirt that like I was wrong or then, I had to make one when it was like, I too was wrong. And I'd be like, (laughs) people would be like working during the day. And I'm at like Target getting like Sharpies, like writing out these shirts. So (laughs) ratchet, but it like actually, that was Jackie. (laughs) Jackie gave me that idea. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to find like a a t-shirt printing store. She's like, just like write it on a a t-shirt. I'm like, so true. Like that's way more like like fun too, to just like have that. Um, And it was great because it was very much like improvised television for half an hour. So, you know, we would just be standing there and then we'd like see a guest come up and it would be like, okay, they like come on. And like, we would just like cheers microphones because people didn't know that we didn't have like commercial breaks. We'd be like, okay, so you exit now and the next person will come in. So we had, we had a lot of fun with that. And, you know, in the moment you're just sort of like, it was very authentically like kind of who we were and who we are and just even some of the moments like there's such a great video of Jackie when she puts the I was wrong shirt on for the first time and it's like how she's like basically a a WWE like diva and (laughs) she's like grabs the microphone and she's like I was wrong I was wrong okay like and I was like (laughs) I I can hear myself laughing like how I laugh when I'm so like, I'm like, I'm like laughing, like giggling, like a school girl. I was just like, I loved that she got so into it. And there were a couple of times that we had those moments where you're like, this is live TV or, you know, we're, we're like, oh, we're making mistakes on stats or things like that. And it's like, that's just like what it is. And so I totally. love that kind of format of like, oh yeah, who is the, who is it on that line? And they're like, yeah, whatever. Well, you know, it's put not it in the often comments. that I think that when, like, it's hard to be in a position like that because especially as like a woman, cause it's very much, if you, if you do flub something like that, it's like, oh, I knew yeah. she didn't know what she was talking about. Yeah. I knew it that like, it's, but it's cool to be able to be in that relaxed environment. And obviously everyone knows that, you know, your shit, everyone knows that Jackie knows her shit. So it's cool to be able to, to rely on that and just be able to have fun and not have yeah. to be so like hard and fast. on like this stat, this stat, these X's and O's, you can just totally. like, let that shit fall to the wayside and be like humans that enjoy the sport. Agreed. And Jackie was so on point to just like, very much you know from the improv world yes and everything like yeah there are moments where I was like it's first time we'd ever worked together before so it was like I'd be throwing curveballs at her she wouldn't know how my personality is or like what I would say and she would just like she would go with it and like make fun of herself I make fun of myself we make fun of each other and I like that after she has been in environments that are so professional she was able to like really just like be herself with me and it not be like I've been with people where they're like worried, like, oh man, my boss is going to kill me for saying that this is like, no, like she had the confidence to just be herself and yeah. do all that. And I love that. Cause I was like, this is great. You know, we had, we, and I felt like by the end, we kind of like 
figured it out because you know beginning you're like trying I told her I was like it's like trying to dance with someone in middle school where you're like uh or like right, anytime right, right. Like, yeah this is how you're close just like, which we way are, are you going our hands. Yeah. yeah yeah what are you putting your feet what's going on <laughs> anytime dancing yeah like I can't um but that was that was really cool to do that and all of these things sort of came to fruition randomly and even doing the conference final with the NHL third period live show in studio came a little bit randomly and then getting to do TNT Turner stuff in the first round was like yeah absolutely a dream come true and that came also super like late like the week before and getting to do Toronto and Tampa and I remember telling my agent to tell them like they know I'm from Toronto right like I just want that to be out there (laughs) like I have videos of me as a Leafs fan um yeah like no like we like the idea that like you understand the fan base and can kind of like talk about basically like the strife that they've been through it's like okay cool and so then doing those two games was like, it was just, it was just so, it felt so good. Like, this is what I'll say is, so I remember looking at the camera that was like up in the stands, like for some of my hits and being so excited to go on air and say yeah. what I wanted to say. There's been so many times you're like, I'm like, don't f- up, don't f- up. Everyone yeah. in the bar is watching you right now. And they're going to see if you f- up and you're going to be a meme. Like that would be me when I used to do <laughs> sideline reporting. It's like, that's so toxic. But after doing like the MMA show that I did for yeah. two months, I'd never done an MMA beyond like whatever, like a quick read or something on a mm-hmm. highlight show and having to like learn that so well. And like, obviously no prompter, no nothing. And have to like look at a camera live on air and be like, this is what's going on. These are the stories like coming up with it. And and I learned how to like really enjoy that moment and be like, I'm so again, like I'm so excited to tell you about this. It's nice to feel that because really when you're in that pressure of like, don't up, don't up or like, oh my God, there's this (laughs) one specific thing that I know I need to get in and like trying to work within those sometimes very stiff parameters can, it's hard to be like, I'm still really having a good time and enjoying myself. Like it can feel very rigid. Um, You were, I saw something when you were doing a hit during uh, the Stanley cup playoffs and you were talking about the thought that you put into those hits and how to make them different from everybody else's. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Cause I feel like that's something a lot of other people can definitely learn from. Yeah, I think I really learned it when I was doing MLS and also college football, where we would all be in the same meetings together. So you're getting the same information. So I always in my head thought, if I'm in these meetings, I none of this is mine. Like it's all everyone's fair game. So I never would, I would have it and have it as information, but nothing like, even if I asked a question and I'd be like, hey guys, can I have that answer? Because I asked that question to that coach, but because the way brains work, people will just, if they've heard something, they might say it on air. Yeah. Like I had that happen so many times. So I'm like, God damn it. That was my hit. Like I even <laughs> told you, but it's just the nature of just like a yeah. human talking about something. So I regularly did a ton of interviews extra outside, like too many to just get extra stuff in case of, because in, in any kind of reporting in a game, like you can have Oh, uh, three, four awesome stories hits. You're like, I'm going to get these in. And then it's like, the game goes completely different. You're like, okay, yeah, none of this mind. stuff is relevant anymore. Can't shoe so that in. Yeah. Now I've, I really have, um, kind of almost like hits on like every guy that could potentially do something yeah. and have like something extra. And so I would be, so for TNT, they would have like different crews coming in for each game. Like the games I worked because ESPN had games one and two, three and four. I didn't meet my crew till 6 PM of like, you know, an 8 PM puck drop. So they had missed the meetings. I got to do the, the broadcast meetings with like sports net and it's much more uh, just, they, they kind of tell you, you know, what's going on that you don't use until the broadcast. And it's kind of whatever it's, it's very cool. So I would then uh, go and use a lot of the stuff and tell it to the people that it would help. Like, I remember going up to Keith Jones, who's in between the benches. And I was like, Hey, Jonesy, uh, you should really be on the lookout. Like Pierre Engvall from the Leafs and, um, uh, Labushkin. These are like guys that Sheldon Keith said, like X, Y, Z, Z, um, <laughs> about. And so you're in between the benches. Like, that's a good hit for you. Right. And he's like, thanks. Like, 
you know, you didn't have to do that. I'm like, no, but that's your domain. And then like, I'd tell Edzo something about whatever and like, let the guys know what was happening because I then had gone and done other stuff where I was like, what can I add to this conversation that like these guys don't already know, can't figure out in the news, can't figure out by like watching warm ups or even having heard those meetings. And so I went, okay, like you almost, like an improv, we call it like, you know, like A to C something where it's like, okay, you have a microphone, like what's, how, how can we take this like to the next level? Like, oh, I have like a big, <laughs> now I love improvised improv. <laughs> now I have, oh, a microphone. Okay. Microphone, like microwave or like, I'm going to whatever. I don't know. Something that like takes it completely away from like what this thing is. So I would then just like go I thought, hey, Bruce Arians won a Super Bowl with um, the Buccaneers the same year John Cooper won his first Stanley Cup with the Lightning. I wonder if I could just get him to talk about John because there's pictures of them together, all this. And like my friend Diana Rossini, who's the best, was like, yeah, I talked with Bruce. He's able to chat with you like later tonight. And I was like, oh my God, amazing. So like able to talk with this guy get some different stuff that I know none of the people in the booth or on the ice will have like in between the benches. And it's not, it's, it always tracks back to the game. Like none of my stuff would be about something random, but it's like, I would have in my head, if you hear, okay, I talked with Ryan Getzloff. He just recently retired from the Anaheim Ducks, but he played with both Corey Perry and Pat Maroon and like, like at that time. And so I would I would get stuff from him like, okay, tell me something about like Perry. Tell me something about Maroon. Tell me something about them together. So that like, if something happens in the game and it's like all Corey Perry, I can be like, Hey, I can add, I can add. None of those guys talk to Ryan gets left what I know. So I would just get as many like different people. And even like the mental skills coach worked with Jalen Rose and like Desmond Howard. I'm like, how can I take it out of the game? that it's still working on the game and what's happening. And like Brendan, uh, sorry, Brian Burke helped me when I called him about the Leafs. I'm like, Hey, we're trying to illustrate to the American audience. Nice flex, by the, the way, Leafs. hell of a call to be able to make. Yo, what up? He's like, Julia, what do you want? Um, <laughs> he's like, I'm in the middle of the playoffs with the Penguins. Like, what do you need? Um, I was like, hi, Mr. Burke. I'm just wondering if you can talk to me about Leafs, but it's like, you know, the blue and white disease and all this. And so it worked perfectly because the Leafs were down 7-3 in that game. So at that mm-hmm. point, you're down 7-3 in the third period. The like camera angles are all these like slow pans of just like the bench. You see like this, and I'm able to then talk about like how difficult the pressure is in Toronto, the media, the unrelenting, like gravitas of having to wear that leaf and blah blah but then it ended positive of like but these guys know how to do it da, da, da. and then the booth can like bounce off of that because Edzo right. played for the leaf so he's like yeah you know I kind of like that pressure or whatever this and this and this so like you're kind of just there to be like you know you're setting everybody you, up you know like in um in curb your enthusiasm like Larry David it's like the like at a dinner party like the middle got a middle I don't know if you've seen this, the latest season where he's like, he'd be invited to dinner parties because like in the middle, you have to facilitate the conversation. Like you can't just sit there. You have to like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, when I, and, and they'd be like, they'd be like, Larry, you have to come to our dinner party to middle. And he's like, no, I'm not coming. I'm not, I'm not doing the middle. Like, cause then they put people who can't middle. And I felt like I need to add something to broadcast. But then it's also a talking point Yes, too for them. So it was honestly, Renee, so exhausting. Like it sounds honestly, like I'm exhausted hearing that. I'm like, oh my God, to like, because it's not just having that hit. It's at what point in the game are you having that hit? What yeah. can you contribute that hasn't already been said? And what's not being redundant to what the whole theme of that entire series might be? Like, there's so much more behind what could be a 30 second hit to try to make those moments as impactful as I possibly can. And that shit will make your head spin. And it's even like less than that, where it's, it's like 10 seconds. Like I told John Forslund, I was like, dude, don't worry. I will get in and out so quickly. Cause I used to do soccer where it was like, when the ball gets the 18 yard box, you stop talking. Yeah. Because I will never forget during the women's world cup. I think it was like Norway and England maybe. And I remember the ball got to the 18 yard box. I just stopped talking. 
instantly. And Justin Kutcher doing play by play swoops in in that one second. And the woman, Lucy Bronze, had this incredible strike and she scored. And it was like, I stopped talking and it's like boom in and it was like wow. a nice seamless transition because like you can't talk over a goal and hockey's even worse so I'm like don't worry I'll tell I was like I will just stop talking and yeah. then you can come back if you want to finish off the story right gosh so. also like you've just covered so many other sports as well how do you kind of pivot between those worlds because each sport has their own different languages they've got their own intricacies they all have like this embedded history to them how do you maneuver between those worlds? I don't know. It's just, I think it's not as difficult um, when you're kind of interested in them and watching them too. Like I haven't been as dialed into MLS and soccer, but like, it's still a, a, a huge part of who I am and me. And I'll see a lot of guys and people I know, and I have so many stories about them and, and we'll be watching a game, like flipping it on. And I'll be like, oh yeah, that guy, like blank, 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 blank. And then yeah even during the pandemic when I wasn't covering hockey or anything, uh, we were watching the Stanley cup playoffs and I'd be like, Oh yeah, this guy, blah, 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 blah. And I was doing reporting just because of all the stuff you've picked up along right. the way of like, Oh, this is interesting. The one thing is just some of the sports I like, again, like MMA, I did not know one single thing about it. And I was very, yeah, how was that whole it. experience doing that show it was I, the one thing it was, actually so awesome like I did PFL um uh professional fighters league fighting league um and it was so good like I was really really hesitant about doing it I was like I don't know anything and like what I have to go to Orlando every weekend like I can't and then I got MCO, there baby coming in hot yeah, he's like I can't go to that <laughs> airport again damn it um <laughs> And then first of all, as we know, in a lot of jobs, it's like all about the people, like yeah. no matter any job I've ever had has been the people don't care what level, wherever working for the Anaheim Ducks was my favorite job in the world because we had the best time together. Yeah. And, and I still hang out with like them when they come here and that I haven't had that job in like six years. Wow. So for PFL, it was like, everyone was super positive, helpful. I was super honest, like I don't know what a rear naked choke is. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what a coffin nail is. I don't know why I'm here, but I'm here. So <laughs> and at one point, Renee, like I had to do in my, in our first fight, because it was like a American idol type thing. And I'm working with Ray Lewis and Tyler Woodley. I'm just like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. I'll just like be here. And then they, it, we things changed, but like in the first one, it was like I had to do highlights without a monitor, and I oh, don't know God. anything, and I also don't know what I'm looking at. So I remember just being like, "Okay, baby, here goes JSB's MMA improv that she's gotten like an hour of," and uh, yeah, it was just kind of fearless with that in that sense. And it was we made sure that never happened again because I'm pretty sure it was pretty bad. But um, you know, <laughs> just do it with do it with confidence. Yeah, and put your no back into it. <laughs> and but it was really great I learned so much and I also was kind of surprised at how less violent it was than I mm. thought it would be and right. I think that like it helps that there's no elbows being thrown in PFL okay um because these guys it's like a league like they have to keep fighting throughout the rest of the year but I found their stories like wild because oh, I yeah. come from all over the world and like yeah like I would be reading their cards as they're like going on stage and like this guy like escapes like you know whatever this war somewhere and had foster family and like grew up like I don't know doing all the stuff you're like oh my god like these people have like the craziest ass yeah. stories yeah um, from all over the world so I I I genuinely really, really liked it. Um, and then getting, yeah, to work with like Randy and, um, uh, God, um, Vitor Belfort and like yeah. all these guys that were Some just legends, pro, legends, pro, in the game. yeah, legends. And I'm like, so, uh, yeah, I like to play hockey. Like there's fighting in that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Have you seen that ice wars show by the way? Uh, it's like no, the fighting yeah. fighting on ice. No. Thing. Did you ever see that? Oh my God. I have to send you a link to it. It's great. Um, okay, I can't yeah. remember where it aired, but yeah, it's like they set up like a rank octagon and they mm. just have that. It's just hockey fights. It's pretty jokes. I want to see that. Cause I know a lot of the guys were like, 
because I was like, oh man, watching hockey fights after seeing MMA, I was like, bang, this like sucks. <laughs> and they're like, no, but that's so, it's so hard to have the balance on ice. So yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah. No, true. it's way different. Plus it's like, I guess if you were at, you know, if you were in like judo and had the gi and you can grab yeah. on somebody's jersey, same kind of mentality with that, I guess. There's still yeah, gonna be some crossovers. True. There could be a little correlation there. Um, okay, because your career is so in your hands, I would say, what do you want to do? What do you want to do next? What is like the end goal dream job for JSB? Because you are a woman of many talents, as we've just discussed. You've worked Thank so you. many different sports. You've covered the Olympics. You just came off working the Stanley Cup. Um, you've done so much shit. What do you want to do now? Um, it's a great question. Uh, all I this like knowledge been, you've acquired, like you could I do feel like anything. I just lived like snippets of a life like oh it's like oh check mark you've done these things but like you haven't really fully done them like completely like oh you hosted a quote unquote like late night show but like did I not really it was like for a bit in the pandemic like on line essentially but it was um, a great like great show it though it was fun by the it was way. fun like, it took a lot awesome like the hardest part was the joke writing every day um yeah. was and without an audience was definitely like mm-hmm. our biggest challenge and also booking guests for the last two three years I've booked guests and we've yeah. had help along the way in certain circumstances the most part it's just been me being like hello um can you come on the show you know what it's like that's how it goes uh, that's I bet I feel like everyone essentially does that even if somebody like might send out the like email to like you know yeah connect people, whatever. But it's honestly like I always find I'm like I'll just do it myself it's just easier I'll just message someone and set it up it's just easier that way and also I find your friends are less likely to cancel on you 100%. than like um, LaShawn McCoy or something like that. <laughs> yes. like, I don't know who this chick is even and what I'm like, busy. Um, yeah. but yeah. I, I'd say like now I'm definitely trying to figure out, like I have goals in place of like, I would like to work in hockey more. I mm-hmm. know that that's like where my heart is. And sometimes you kind of have to like, what better way to like reignite that than covering the Stanley cup right? Or to be yeah. like, that's what I want. It's right there. Yeah. And I think it was like being there, seeing everyone, knowing so many of these players and feeling, feeling like I belong, but also like, not just like, Oh, a comfort level, but like knowing I really like this thing and like, yeah. I love it so much and it doesn't matter the crazy travel or whatever you're doing. Like I want to work in hockey and I feel like I can just, someone can ask me a question in hockey and I can just like riff. Like I know it, I play it. It's just feels very like a good fit. Yeah. Um, at the same point, like I'm still like very much open to doing so many different things. And I think that that's, what's interesting is through all of my travels, like my, and this kind of probably has hurt my career. I get influenced by so many different things that I can like like, that too. Yeah. I have super ADD where I'm like, now I want to do this. Actually. I am like, (laughs) yeah, no, I hear you. Like sort of okay. At like a lot of things and not one particular thing, but well, especially in a world where I feel like everyone kind of has to be a specialist at something like I find that I can kind of shoot myself in the foot with that where I'm like, well, I mean, do you want me to do a cooking show? Cause I can do that. Or do you want me to talk wrestling? Or do you want to talk MMA? Or do you want to like, yeah. I don't know, maybe I could do a home decor show. Who knows what's going to happen? Like, yeah. I feel like I can like participate in so many different conversations. You can, you can do every conversation Renee. And that's what I loved about your conversation with Jackie. I was like, yes, we need like Renee, you need like a national like prime time <laughs> show. Like, well, I, I wish all I would love that of you and well, like thank you deserve you. it. And uh, my boyfriend, as he was leaving, he's like, "Oh, you're gonna have so much fun!" Like, you and Renee have like great chemistry. I was like, Renee has great chemistry with everybody. That's like <laughs> Renee. Like, you do. You do. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I yeah, mean, I you're just... so like your personality is like so charismatic and like attractive. You're like, oh, I want to hang out with Renee. I'm like, oh my God, I love that. As somebody that just sits <laughs> in their house in this fucking corner all the time, it would be nice to hang out with some people. Please. I know, right? Like, have like, you want to come over? Do a show. Yeah, of course. I'm like <laughs> there today. Um, yeah. Do a show with people and like have fun and do that's what I missed. Like, pre pandemic, we had a show on. Sportsnet New York, SNY called The Thread. And it was like, we were all just personalities talking about sports. We didn't really have any experts on the show, but it'd be like, 
what do you think about this or that? And it would be fun because then you wouldn't have to talk X's and O's. I'd be like, oh, the yeah. Mets bullpen. I actually said this on air. I was like, the Mets bullpen is like herpes. You don't notice it until it flares up. <laughs> we, they were the, they're the broadcaster of the Mets. I'm shocked I didn't just get fired on the spot. Like, they just you know, like yank like a, you off with one of those like hooks. Like, see you later, yeah. guys. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think I would, I want to do, like, I want to create more, like, I want to take, I like drinks with banks. I think it has a lot more ability to do something there, more for than what sure, it's doing. For sure, for sure, for sure. Like, like not to, only does it have a great name, but like the you. wheels are in motion for that. Like, of course. Yeah, I'd like to take it obviously outside of my apartment and like make it kind of like an Anthony Bourdain yes. type of thing with people yeah. and in the sports world um, and beyond, but like mostly sports and sporting events mm-hmm. and ideas. It's like, hey, you go to Wimbledon and you're going to like, Oh my have god, yeah. Pims with like yes. whoever. Love me there. some Pims. Like, oh my god. You almost like a Rick Steves to be like super old school. Um <laughs> of like okay, wherever we are, and we're gonna go here and this and this, and like just make it kind of more like a travel and enter travel interview show. Yeah. And then um, yeah, and then also I just want to be like super famous and rich. So mm-hmm. like however that comes about, somehow afford this stupid New York apartment somehow have a job that would warrant that Mm -hmm. and um I also started writing a book I had based on kind of like the Olympics last year like I hadn't even thought about writing a book and then I was like is it like biography style or not it is um it's a like a journalistic oh wow cool yeah I was like it's a it's a book that does not like about me but it's parts of me are in it because I experienced some of the stuff yeah, I got to rework it a bit because um, my literary agent was like, yeah, he called me and I was in a shopper's drug mart for my, our Canadian friend. Hell yeah. Yeah. You getting were. Cl- chloroseptic because my throat hurts, <laughs> of which 20 <laughs> minutes later, I tested positive for COVID. So oh, I was God. like, great. That's what cut my TNT tenure short. Mm-hmm. But I was in the Royal York in Toronto. And it's a pretty good place to be quarantined. Oh, yeah. We spoke like, about that. Good spot. Yes. Yeah. It's like I've been in this hotel for 500 years and I've never <laughs> seen any of it because I've just been in this room. But uh, he was like, OK, so we've got like seven rejections, but they're all like he didn't say this. I was like, oh, that sucks. But then I read them and I'm like, these are like the nicest rejections I've ever seen where Olympic books technically typically don't do that well. like people aren't like, I've got to get an Olympic book. It's like, you have to like, then put it in a way where is this a book on like uncovering anything? Is this a book on like, you know, scandal? Probably not. I don't want to get my pants suit off me by the IOC, but like, it's more (laughs) on the athletes and what they had to go through, like to compete in a pandemic or not. Yeah. And I felt it in like, Japan where it was like so locked down to like there. Like, yeah. And there's no fans. And like yeah. when I was there, like I still have like, like PTSD over it, but like they didn't have anyone in the stands. And I always felt there was no energy exchange during a game where you would yeah. like feel like, Oh, we're up or we're down or like whatever. It was like, whenever they would come over to me, cause I was the pool reporter. So I was at every game three baseball games a day I would, I was like how do I do that um I I would be standing there and I just ask them like the very simple questions because also that's what we were like just told to do too but they would unload on me like every single feeling they had it was like a cry fest every day and I was like mm-hmm. man then I would cry because it was like they it was like our own all our feelings are the same for the Olympics like you have a dream and you either like accomplish it or like you don't. Yeah. And it's like insane to be like, I would, whenever I made it final, when I'd be like, so one woman who's from Italy, a softball player, I was like, you got the honor of like sharing the Olympics. Like your mom played in in the Olympics. Like, what does that mean to have been an Olympian, been an Olympian? You just lost is very final. And she just like, Water Ooh, that just gave me goosebumps. Yeah. I mean, and it you was literally like, work your whole life for that moment. And it's a moment that will come and it's a moment that will go. And, it goes, and then, it goes. then what now real life is ahead of you when you get home of whatever that looks like. I know. And it was like, how 
no one would know what it was like there. That's what it felt yeah. like. I was like trying to explain it to people and it felt like trying to explain a movie no one had ever seen. Yeah. Where they're also like, can you just stop talking about the Olympics? My boyfriend's like, can you stop talking about the Olympics? I'm like, I have so much stuff I have to tell you. Like I literally yeah. witnessed like the weirdest thing in the entire world. And then also to add in Beijing, where I interviewed a lot of athletes before they left. And like Jennifer Jones was like my dad, who's a curler, Canadian curler for all our again, Canadian crowd <laughs> was like my day, like my day to day rest. If my Olympic dreams rest on, if I have like one line or two on a COVID test and it's like, wow, oh. I know, I know. Right. So there's a lot of mental health stuff yeah. and like yeah. even guys that like didn't get to compete because they were close contact or quarantined or like who was deciding all this stuff? You'll like, literally live the rest of your days telling people how you almost went to the Olympics. That's the story. That's now the story of your life. And I, I like want to like, re, I like, I'm such an empath. I like want to reach out to some of these people that like didn't get to compete because of COVID and be like, Are you hi, okay? like I'm yeah. here for you as a therapist. Like, I don't know <laughs> what, like, yeah, yeah. Like I empathize with you in this regard because it was like really, and also then there's another investigative side to it of like, who's in the room deciding this? Yeah. How do we know that any of this stuff isn't like contaminated Political or like, or yeah. Yeah. Then my brain starts going, I'm like, oh, let's do an investigation into, and then it's like, okay, we're gonna need more than just you, Julie. <laughs> Who are your sources to like take down like the WHO and IOC and everyone together, just like me, oh my which I gosh. kind of like the idea of, but, um, you know, though, not happening. Don't worry. We have, as Jackie said on your pod, she's always wanted to do an Olympics. Like I've done an Olympics, but never for host broadcaster. And all I've, all I've ever wanted is to do like, you know, I got, got a little, little Tokyo ball that I caught yes. last year here I'm a big oh my god I'm such a loser I have my Olympic mug too <laughs> represent my Rep friend's like represent. you actually need a restraining order from the Olympics I was like I know <laughs> it's their job to get it yeah jealous um, much yeah jealous, jealous. much <laughs> yeah I would like to do that but I also think now at this point it's kind of like there's a couple things in on my vision board, but then all, my my imaginary vision board because I'm too lazy to make a an actual vision one. board. Yeah, agreed. But at the also, I feel point, like that. I mean, I know people say they're really great, but I would I'd feel like a school project if I was doing it. I I can't bring myself to do it. Started doing it, bought all these magazines, and then yeah. just sitting there cutting it and me. I got other shit I need to do. Is this going to look good in my room, or just like <laughs> like literally a two year old did this it's and put it up? And I'll totally. be like, why do I have that piece of shit in my room? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, I, I, and I like the vibe of like, you know, the, like you, like the late night kind of talk show type vibe, that kind of stuff. Like, but that, those things aren't even doing that well these days. So I kind know. of been like, there's no demand, sort of like, so they say there's no demand for anything, but I'll say yeah. what there is demand for is like these podcasts I started listening to that are basically just like about things you want to know, like about your body like mm. about um what like what is metabolism or like do I need eight hours of sleep or like how much water do I need like actual just people questions and like yeah oh that's, that's smart I'm on like a big drinking water kick I spent way too yes, much time drinking ice coffee I'm like maybe mm -hmm. let's throw like it's like going to the bar like let's throw in a water between every drink you know let's break it up a little bit I'm, I'm on that kick right now. I'm on a very yeah. big, um, I'm on a, a dental hygiene, skin Ooh. hygiene. I'm doing it all like the what's, basics. What's the secrets? Well, like, I'm, what are I'm you starting doing? Invisalign next week. Oh, nice. Good. I just finished it. Did you? Mm -hmm. What was your experience? It was great. Um, <laughs> listen, your teeth look helps. like a million bucks. The, what I wanted to do was my bottom teeth. I yeah. had like, I wish I could show you before. I had like almost like a snaggle tooth as my room, my old roommate said, I always know when your Instagram stories come on because you have this tooth that sticks out. I was like, okay, a simple, you <laughs> see my face. And uh, I was like, oh my God. Um, <laughs> she's sweet, but she was like, I was like, that's a Hot jerk throat. thing to say yeah, to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And I noticed this like tooth that kept going up. So I did that. And then also I used to suck my thumb when I was a kid. So mm. my teeth That'll like went get in. Ya. 
yeah, that'll get you. And so I did it. I would say it was like really quite annoying for a while because yeah. how long did you wear work, it for? I only supposed to wear it for six months. I wore it for a year because Fuck. you basically add on any time that you don't wear it Shit. to like the end. Okay. So, you know, 22 hours a day. If you only wear them, I would only wear them maybe let's just give it like 12 to 16 hours yeah. max. Yeah. Well, then you just think about all those hours and you add them on to the end. So it basically did like another six months. And then the weird part is, is now that they're off, I can feel them move. And I have like, you wear it at night, but you can, it's almost like it's going to be a never, it's like a child. Oh my God. Like I can never let it be on its own. Yeah. 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 No, that's my fear of starting it. Then I'm like, you know what you're getting into now? Because now you're in it to win it. You've got to wear it all the time. Now you're you'll like it a though. You'll, you'll like it. I think you'll, you'll at least see some changes and be happy. I, I was, I feel more comfortable at least smiling in photos before I was like, yeah, that's me. I'm always, I always <laughs> cover my teeth. Cause I have like one tooth that like slightly goes in. I'm like, what is the shadow that's being cast? I Cause I don't need that in my And face. you'll see them change. It's really weird. People listening who have had Invisalign, it's like, they will move your teeth in a weird way. And you're like, why is this happening? And it's like to get like one out and then they'll like put it back in. It's like, this oh, like, Oh God, I didn't even think about yeah that. so you'll feel at some point at one point I was like why do I have a it's got to get gap? worse before it gets better yeah. <laughs> oh no oh well no, you know what every, it's okay work from home I'll just it. adjust the camera angles I'll just push I'll push out it'll be fine I wish I'd done it in the panty not when like every, like when it was when intense quarantine not yeah. when it was like we're going outside in the world and people would because as much as be you like, call it Invisalign we can all see it I see you are wearing a mouthpiece like I see it and I can hear it all of it people will be like just looking at it and you're like <laughs> okay I know I have heard it I know That's I why know I, I wish I did it I like, like two okay. years ago but yeah, yeah if you're wearing a mask is great but and also apparently Perfect. when you're pregnant you, your teeth shift during that too so I'm like okay it's good that I'm doing it I mean, I would love to knock out having another baby so we'll see what happens yeah there. I love how you had but a like, baby and it's like you had a baby, baby and it's like, I, I first yeah. of all, have never seen your baby. I don't even know if you actually had a baby. Oh my God. I'll send you photos of her. Okay. She's like, <laughs> oh my God. Is she ever like, cute you, like, and cool. you like had a baby, but like, I don't know that you had a baby. <laughs> Did she have a baby? I know. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. It's all a ruse. I just wanted time off to eat carbs. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. No, that. I'll send you pictures of her. She's a real, real cool dude. Big fan of that kid. She's oh, a real sassy so little number. She's. I like how you say cool. that because I'm like, I can't imagine being like Tyler. Like, mommy's doing a podcast. Like, shh. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's that part of it's a doozy. I, someone's watching her right now, of course. But uh, no, like I love doing this. And this was something like, even though, you know, I, I interviewed people on TV uh, for WWE mm -hmm. for years, but that was always like scripted interviews. I thoroughly enjoyed doing that, but oh, I didn't know yeah. how much I was going to enjoy, like actually conducting interviews like this. Like I love hanging out with people. I love shooting mm -hmm. the shit with people. Um, so just, I guess, kind of just trying to find ways to expand that. Like, how can I make that? a bigger thing, like more to kind of chew on with that. And whether it is a thing, like, you know, what you were saying about like the, the drinks with banks, like on the road, like having a cookbook, like I would love to find a way to like combine food and interviews mm -hmm. and like sports and like right. all of those kinds of things. Cooking but, like with people yeah. or like having them on and like also interviewing them. We could do like a double feature of like drinks with banks. You're and on then, cocktails, like, oral I'm session. on the meal. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. And we'll like travel around and like book different venues and it'll be like, Hey, this is our, God, that would I feel be like so that's the fun. thing. Yeah. That'd be cool. Like we're going we could, on tour. Yeah. Yes. That actually, that would be so, so fun. As much as like be being on the road so can be a pain in the ass. I do also love it. It's like a love hate relationship, but that I've like not done it in so long that it would probably like kick my ass if I did it right now. But when you're in it, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, I think something like that, like, and I always come back to like, like the Kelly Ripa gig, like something like yeah. that is something that I would love Dude, to do. Like, the get Jerry Moore gig. like, yeah, something like that, where it is more of like a 
talking about all the things you have on an actor, you have on an actress, you have on an athlete, you have on all of these different interesting people while also talking about what's going on in the news and doing these like Mm -hmm. fun other segments, like something like that. I love, like, I think I kind of think of myself as more of like a traditional like TV host where I'm not that specialist. It's like, oh, my thing is this one thing, even though I guess people would say that that's wrestling, but I've already done it for WWE. Yeah. So I don't do that anymore. So it's right. like finding that other thing to go do. But yeah, I, I think like, I don't feel like that traditional host thing really exists anymore. Those jobs are all taken and I don't know what will happen after those go away. It's a very good question. Cause it's like, is that changing with like the industry of like, well, yeah. and yet, like, but I mean, you, I could see you on the today show or good morning America tomorrow. You know, oh, I would love to do stuff. that. Yeah, let's and then pull like, them up. Yeah, I'm like, I feel like <laughs> I'm now, I don't know who your agent is. I'm like, okay, you want to so be my agent. we're going uh, <laughs> to, um, buys a little game you're a natural here. on there. And yeah, because you had like, you had the wrestling stuff, but like, even when I, as I mentioned, like first met you and knew you, like that wasn't like the first thing I thought of you. Right. I thought of you, I still have like you in my head, like wakeboarding, like that's like what I remember. <laughs> Which I've not done in so long. I was actually just talking about that. I'm like, I need to get back out on a wakeboard. I got to just like prove to myself. I still got it. That you can like, to go. Do this. I can no, still no, get I, up. I love it. And you, you already, you have like the ability to have conversations with everyone. And I found this interesting, like listening to some of your shows where you do such a good job of asking like questions that are, very simple but interesting and they're not like like you will inject some of your personality but not to the point where I watch a lot of people on tv and they're ask a question and then they answer it and then people will then their guests are given a chance but I like like even yes. just to you you'll ask just like a you know just even out of the blue like a, oh well like what scares you most or like what are you the, like something that would be fascinating for people to know about someone yeah background not just like the regular stuff and yeah so yeah like, we like to go a little I like to you know we like to dig in sometimes and just I, I like that discovery I just it, it sounds like yeah. cheesy or like I just love discovering about people but I do think everyone has a really cool story and totally. I love knowing how people get into things and like what their whole like journey and process is, especially talking to somebody like you who like, we have like very similar backgrounds and like your story is going to be different from what my story was, but it's like yeah, finding totally. those intersecting paths. Like I just, I, I love shooting the shit like, about like stuff your, like that. Like meeting your dad at an Alice Cooper concert. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Was the best. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> It was so cool. He like came up to me and he was like, I don't know if you know my daughter, like Renee Paquette. And I was like, oh my God, she's living legend. Obviously I know who she is. And also like, how, how do you know me to be able to say this in this moment? It was like, my dad keeps his finger on the pulse. He knows who, he knows who all the people are that I talk to. It's great. It was, it was great. I was like, okay, Alice Cooper concert. So he's do you travel with him or is he at like the Bud Light stage? No. So he used to be at the Bud Light stage. He was working there for, uh, for a long time for live nation. And he, I mean, he toured with bands for forever, but so that's cool. like, that is his world. Yeah. Yeah. Growing up in that world was definitely like interesting for me. I feel like that was like my <laughs> first foray into like the entertainment world where I was like, Whoa, wait, no one's on this stage right now while everything's getting set up. Give me a minute. Hold my, hold oh, my juice totally. box. I got some yeah. shit to do. What's oh in this? God, I love trunk? that. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I, love, I love being able to grow up like that around all like the road cases and seeing someone's like dressing room. Like that stuff was always really, really cool, cool. for me to be and able then, to like experience. WWE would be like then also with all that like entertainment yeah. and like, Oh yeah. And that's why I feel like WWE was such a great spot for me to land. And it was, you know, definitely not this like intentional thing of like, that's where I want to go and what I want to do. But once I got there and I was like, Oh, this is like, as much as like, I come from like the sports broadcasting world, but that was also not like, I was never doing X's and O's or anything like that. Like I would host the shows and have conversations and kind of yeah. prod stuff along. Um, but coming from that background, while mostly coming from like an entertainment background and then fusing those yes, things together, yes. I was like, oh, this is perfect. I get, I get this. I get this. I understand perfect. it. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. I can see that I hadn't been to a, and so I know we have to like wrap up soon or I don't know, actually, I'm not the host of this show. I'm like, we have to go soon. Um, before we go, um, uh, he, like I went to my first um, wrestling WWE 
event. And you uh, are going to participate. Yeah. Are you just forming a tag series? team or like what's going on? Okay. Well, after I watched it, I was like, yeah, no, I can't do this. Um, <laughs> I was like, ow, my back just watching like them flip oh off. Oh my of God. I know. Right. I was like, okay. And Jackie was great. She was with me. And I was like, okay, so like, give me the backstory on all these people and things. I was like, what's this like? And like, who is, why are there like 10 people in there right now at this time? And then yeah, like, yeah, yeah. whatever. Break and it was it cool down. just then to also know, cause I'd had Biggie on my show. Like, okay, so Biggie knows he's losing to Roman Reigns right now. Like that kind of stuff, just like, yeah. because of the nature of it, which I find very fascinating, but I do like the like flamboyance of it. And like, and I kept oh telling my, God, my boyfriend, right? I was like, I like think I could totally be this. And he was like, yeah. no, give me I, the tassels. He, give me the sparkles. <laughs> like I, I'm like, I I'm already it. like Elton John, basically. I like shout I out. I have to that my shirt, by the king. way. Yeah. Oh, wait, is mine it. the same as that? I uh, there's, there's like two different ones. I have mine's both. not that one. I like yours better than mine. Shit. I got this at anthropology. I feel like oh, see, mine things. was off of free people. Oh, yeah. Go. Okay. I'm pretty sure I might have that one. Chips as well. passing just, in the night. Just splurged <laughs> on some tickets to see him. I was like, I gotta Yay. go. Uh, but I feel like oh that Lady gosh. Gaga, Elton John, Alice mm-hmm. Cooper, like Rocky Horror Picture Show is yes. all my like inspirations. I mean, not the like, I mean, maybe and, and fighting in hockey. I was like, this feels like a no brainer. And then when I saw them, I was like, <laughs> Never Julie, mind. like you, I literally snapped my neck neck by sleeping on a different pillow. I was like, eh, no, not happening. <laughs> I will appreciate from a distance. You yes, guys yeah. do your they thing. They get hurt. Oh my, oh my God. God. Hurt. Listen, my husband's constantly like hobbling around. Yeah, it's a doozy. It's a, yeah, it's a real shit show, but it's fun. We love it. Um, yeah. Well, listen, JSB, I'm so glad that I got to have you on again. This Thanks is one of those things where like, on. there were so many things things that we could have talked about. I, know. Um, I just, I find you fascinating, truly. Like I love watching your career. I love that you can hang in so many different conversations. Like you literally pop up in so many different worlds and just like own that shit. And oh, I love well, that. So thanks. kudos to you. Keep crushing it. I don't, but I've just kind of like had a, I, I like in my career is to like a rickety roller coaster where you're like, you're not really sure what's going to happen. And like, should you get on it? Like, it's <laughs> like, um, leave you... shit. What's the Wonderland one? The, I know, uh, uh, the, um, uh, Wildebeest. Is the Wildebeest. Oh, I amazing. fucking love the Wildebeest. Yeah, I was like, that's, that's actually the best ride at Wonderland is the Wildebeest. Yeah, we were like, okay, it's not one of the new ones, but it'll give you a real scare. And also <laughs> it probably is not like going anywhere special, but it <laughs> might, you never know. It might. <laughs> definitely all over the place which I'm like that's what it's about the journey not the destination yeah, so guys just hang out for the journey or, yeah did, we all saw the like galaxies of millions of millions of galaxies we and did. stars so it's like whatever I'm just gonna YOLO for the rest of my life <laughs> <laughs> uh well girl I'm so happy that I got to have have you on here and that we got to hang out and yes we should have like a melding of our shows together and yeah just yeah what happens. No, why a, not a collab sesh yeah why not I have lots of ideas that's one thing so we will we'll talk. We'll chat. We'll yeah. talk. <laughs> All right. See ya. Thanks.